Well, here we are again. It's a beautiful evening, and it's time for a music history moment. That's what I'm feeling. Got the fire going here, so I hope you hear a few things that you're interested in. Um, this is Vivaldi. Antonio Vivaldi, from 1678 to 1741, is considered one of the foremost Italian composers of the Baroque era. He was famous, well-respected, and made a comfortable living most of his life, but he died a pauper. That's the way it goes. Vivaldi might take some offense at being called an Italian since he was actually born and lived in Venice. At the time, Venice was a separate city-state, so Vivaldi was technically a Venetian, not an Italian. Maintaining the distinction between Venetians and Italians is something that you had to be a Venetian to be really good at. Nowadays, it's virtually a lost art. When little Antonia was born, the midwife who delivered him baptized him right away. She wasn't at all sure he'd make it and wanted to give him a fighting chance at the pearly gates. He did survive, although he remained sickly all of his life. Vivaldi's mother, Camilla, was a simple tailor's daughter and his father, Gian Battista, was a barber and also a talented violinist. He had three sisters and two brothers who were always getting into trouble. Vivaldi studied, studied for the priesthood and finally made it, although it took him nearly ten years to get around to all the various stages of the holy orders. Even after he became a full-fledged priest, he hardly ever said Mass. He claimed that his weak health and asthmatic condition made it too difficult for him. Some biographers prefer to believe that he could never get through a whole Mass in one sitting because he was always dashing off to the sacristy to jot down a musical theme he had just, that had just popped into his head. Some biographers also have a theory that he was high up in the Venetian criminal underworld, but there's no need to take this theory seriously. Because of the color of his hair, Vivaldi was nicknamed Iprita Rosa, or the Red Priest. Today he might be called Carrot Head. Vivaldi spent most of his life as a teacher of violin at the Ospedella della Pieta, which was a school for orphaned girls. The Pieta was built in 1348, one of the four institutions in the city built to house foundlings, orphans, and other destitute children. There must have been a lot there must have been a lot of these since the original building was expanded several times over the centuries before Vivaldi came to teach there. The Pieta was intended exclus exclusively for girls and young women, many of whom were the illegitimate offspring of concubines and mistress mistresses of the wealthy and powerful. The orphanage, the orphanage was surrounded by a big stone wall with an iron gate. Beside the gate was a little nook in the wall, just big enough to hold a baby. The porter went out every morning to check for new arrivals. The gate also had a large, stern sign warning everyone that the babies they left in the nook had better be ones that they couldn't care for by themselves. The vast majority of his music, Vival of his music Vivaldi composed for his pupils at the orphanage, which he had developed an orchestra that was renowned all over Europe. Every Sunday, the Pieta Orchestra gave a recital for which the chapel was usually packed. Since it was in a church, applause was not permitted. Instead, the audience members would show their appreciation by coughing or blowing their noses loudly. Some of the orphanage girls came to be quite celebrated for their musical ability. Vivaldi himself was gaining quite a reputation, both as a violinist and as a composer. As well as teaching at the Pieta, he played fiddle in the Opera House Orchestra and sometimes filled in as music director at the orphanage for Francesco Gasparini, who had a habit of disappearing on occasion. Venice, in Vivaldi's time, was an exciting place to be. There was music everywhere, even the lowliest cobblers and fruit, vent, fruit, fruit, nope, fruit vendors would whistle tunes in the marketplace gondoliers would burst into song at the least provocation. But the Venetians were an odd lot. There was nothing they liked more than spending vast amounts of money on expensive and elaborate clothing. They passed strict laws limiting the number of days when you were allowed to dress up. In 1732, the state passed a law prohibiting fans that were too luxurious. In 1750, it passed a law that ladies visiting each other could serve refreshments worth no more than a ducat. 
Nevertheless, visitors flock to the city each year to take part in the famous carnival festivities. Kings and queens, dukes, duchesses, and other members of European nobility came for visits and went to parties, concerts, and opera performances. When Frederick, Frederick IV of Denmark and Norway visited Venice for the carnival of 1708, he introduced himself to everybody as the Count of Olenburg, just so he could avoid all that bowing and scraping that, oh, sorry, bowing and scraping that kings usually have to put up with. He was so taken with the beauty of Venetian women that he had 12 miniature portraits painted of his favorite to carry around with him. The crown prince and princess of Russia qua caused quite a commotion during their visit when they refused to pay half their hotel bill. Max is so sad right now. In 1713, Vivaldi turned his hand to composing operas, 49 of which survive today. His first opera, Otone in Villa, was a libretto by Domenico Lali. Lali's real name was Sebastino Biancardi, but he changed it after leaving Naples accused of embezzlement. These operas were written between 1713 and 1739 for an average of nearly two each year. His, his record time was the opera Tito Manilo, composed in only five days. He says so himself on the front, the frontispiece. Hmm. Vivaldi once boasted that he composed faster than a copyist could write down the music. He saved time by using shortcuts. In the manuscript of one of his violin concertos, he gave up writing out the figured bass part and marked a section he had already done with the comment, For the dimwits. Nice. Going to an 18th century Venetian opera was definitely more fun if you were rich. Rich people sat in private boxes where they could gamble and have food brought in. They had great fun dropping orange peels and spitting on the people below them, aiming to put out their candles. Opera singers posed their own particular problems for the composer. The famous castrato Luigi Marchesti, for instance, insisted that no matter what character he was playing in whatever opera, his first entrance had to be from the top of a hill. It didn't matter to him if the opera had no need for a hill in its plot. Either he got a hill or he didn't sing. Wearing a plumed helmet and carrying a sword, shield, and lance, Marchesi would enter singing the aria Mia Speranza Io Pur Voria, which the composer Giuseppe Sarti had written especially for him. Although Vivaldi's operas were very popular in his day, and he also composed quite a lot of music for church use, he is best remembered now for his many concertos, most of them for violin and orchestra. Among the best known of his orchestral concertos are those known as the Four Seasons. Even people who don't like classical music like Vivaldi's Four Seasons, so we must be doing something right. All in all, Vivaldi composed about 450 concertos of one sort or another. People who find his music too repetitious are inclined to say that he wrote the same concerto 450 times. This is hardly fair. He wrote two concertos 225 times each. There you have it, Vivaldi. What a guy. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.